This video, I'm going to kind of talk about the 2004-ish to 2008-ish IC School Bus CE300. Um, this has the DT466E engine in it, 7.6 liter. Um, so let me start by saying that I am not a mechanic, but sometimes I have to pretend to be one, um, nor am I really a video person. So apologize for poor video quality and I will not even do any editing before uploading this, but uh, I wanna talk about uh, uh, starting this bus. Um, and uh, if your bus doesn't start, some things to check out um, that may be helpful if you're asking for help online or talking to a real mechanic, uh, things they may want you to check or, or look for, or uh, you know, maybe some things you can just fix yourself that uh, will not require you to call a mechanic. So um, like I said, this one is a 2006, uh, it's a 40 foot bus. Um, um, your uh, bus may be a little bit different, but one way to tell if uh, we're talking about the same thing is if your years are roughly 2004, 2006, I'll pop the hood here and show you a couple things to look for um, to see if you got the same bus. But the main thing to watch out for is that uh, we're talking about CE300 here. Uh, the 300s uh, are the uh, DT466 motors. The CE200s are the smaller, uh, usually 6.0 V8 uh, in this age. Uh, so things in the engine uh, will be a little bit different, um, but some of the generic troubleshooting steps may be the same. Um, so with that, I'm going to pause the video, pop the hood, and show you what to look for in the engine bay. Okay, so when talking about uh, a, a bus that won't start, um, especially if you're asking for help online and forums, uh, Facebook posts, whatever, um, be sure to differentiate um, if uh, your bus is not starting uh, because it's not even trying to turn over or if you hear it cranking and trying to turn over but it doesn't actually start. Um, those are kind of two different uh, troubleshooting steps. So the stuff I'm going to talk about is if it doesn't even try to start, won't even, uh, you don't even hear it cranking, turning over, starter's not running, things like that. Uh, if your starter is going and the engine's cranking and trying to turn over but doesn't actually start, uh, um, that gets beyond me, and that's the point I usually call my mechanic. So everything I'm going to talk about is if uh, it doesn't even try to start. So one way to tell um, if we're even talking about the same engine, like I said, this is a 2006 DT466E. Um, if you're after about 2004 or so, uh, your bus will have on the usually passenger side of the engine this long tube here. Uh, it can be round or it can also be kind of square rectangular. That is called the EGR cooler. Uh, that's an emission standard that came out in roughly 2004. So most engines approximately 2005 and after are going to have that, um, at least with the 466s. Um, and then on the newer end of the spectrum, uh, I said roughly 2008. And the way to tell that if we're still talking about the same engine is the actual color of the engine. So if your engine is this uh, kind of light bluish, bluish green color, um, that is uh, pre-max force. Max Force was the variant that came out in 2008 that has even more emissions uh, controls in it. So this one has, like I said, this is a 2006, so it's after 2004, it's got the EGR cooler, but the engine is still blue, so it's the actual DT466E. Um, the Max Forces are a great engine uh, and have a lot of other stuff in there, uh, more advanced emissions controls and stuff like that. So again, some of the generic uh, troubleshooting steps may still apply, um, but some of it may be a little bit different. So if, if you're not getting, uh, like I said, if the bus is not even trying to start, a um, few different things to check and watch for. Um, up here are a whole bunch of uh, fuses and relays. Uh, so it's usually a good idea to check all of your fuses, make sure they're all still good, they're all snug and secure. You don't have any loose or frayed wires. Uh, so that's one spot to check for fuses. Usually I don't have problems up there with fuses. Um, I don't think I've ever had to change one. I've got a fleet of about uh, three or four of this particular style bus, and I've never had really problems with that uh, fuse block up there right underneath the windshield. Um, usually if I got a fuse issue, it's in the electrical panel uh, or the battery box over on the driver's side, which I will show you now. Okay, so this is the electrical panel right underneath uh, your driver's window. A um, couple things to watch out for in here. These uh, that kind of stick out and have these little pegs here, these are actually breakers, not fuses. Um, kind of similar to what you have like at home, you just flip the breaker. If it gets tripped, this will uh, pop out and you can reset them. Um, the difference between these and a fuse is these little fuses kind of set down in there uh, and those are disposable. So if those are blown, you actually have to replace the fuse. Whereas these breakers, if they get tripped, you just push the button in. So if you're having a no start issue, um, most of these are accessory um, fuses and, and breakers. So this doesn't usually tie into engine um, but it's a good idea to just check them anyway make sure you don't have a bunch of blown uh, breakers or blown fuses uh, so check all those make sure those are solid and good 
and there are more of them underneath this little panel here to check. So make sure all of your breakers are good. Uh, depending on uh, how old your bus is and who all has owned it or done things to it, your wiring may be uh, cleaner or more messy than mine. Um, this is a party bus, so uh, there's been a lot of uh, connections added to it uh, over time uh, for lights and stereo and stuff like that in this bus. Um, if your bus is fresh off school bus duty, uh, hopefully you're a little bit cleaner, but even the school districts sometimes add things in here for you know radios or GPS or safety equipment, stuff like that. So one thing uh, that's not related to engine starting but is a pretty common issue on these things are these solenoids here. Uh, these do go bad uh, quite frequently, uh, especially if they're overloaded. Um, but these are your accessory solenoids, so these power things inside the bus once the key has been turned on. Uh, things like uh, your dome lights, uh, your radio, your heaters, defrosters, uh, stuff like that. Uh, that's not directly related to the operation of the bus. Um, so you'll still have headlights, turn signals, stuff like that if this doesn't work. But these are your accessory solenoids. Uh, most buses are going to have a diagram on the side here. It's a little bit cumbersome to read, um, but this is the area we're talking about here, uh, this main fuse block and these two solenoids. Uh, so you notice there's two, there's a master disconnect and a noise disconnect, which equate to these. Uh, so most of your primary things are gonna be tied to this one. Um, uh, and then this one here is your noise kill. So up in the bus at the dash, there's a switch called um, noise kill. Um, and so things that are tied to that, so when you hit that switch up there, it turns the solenoid off. And things that get put on this solenoid are things that make noise, like the radio, um, fans, heaters, stuff like that. The idea being that a school bus driver, when they come to a railroad crossing, they hit noise kill, and it turns off all the things in the bus that are making noise, except for the kids, um, so that they can listen for trains um, without having to go through and individually shut off fans, radio, uh, heaters, stuff like that. They just hit one switch and it kills everything off of there. Um, usually, depending on how you're wired, um, these two uh, solenoids are wired together. You can kind of see that this loops from here um, over to here on this one. Uh, so they are tied together. So when the key turns on, uh, this one turns on, which then turns this one on, unless the noise kill up uh, in the cab has been activated. Um, so if you're troubleshooting, like, uh, like I said, you know, you know, fans not working or heaters not working or, you know, no power uh, for dome lights, stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty common for these to go bad. And when I talk about uh, noises that you should hear when this bus starts, you'll hear me reference a click noise uh, from the electrical panel when this comes on. So as soon as I turn the key on, you'll hear a very loud click as this comes on. That is normal. Uh, if you don't hear that click, um, then chances are you have something wrong with this. But like I said, that generally doesn't relate to, uh, to problems with the engine starting, just something to, to listen for uh, when you start the bus. Okay, and then right below uh, that electrical panel is your battery box. Usually it's the first compartment here after the engine bay on the driver's side. Uh, so if you get back to uh, no start issues, uh, some things to watch out for in here. Uh, first of all, make sure all of your uh, lugs are good and tight. Um, if they are loose at all, um, you, you could have uh, power issues or grounding issues. Uh, so check all of them on both the positive and the negative side. Uh, make sure they're all uh, good and snug, um, not loose. Make sure that all of the actual connectors, uh, your, your ring connectors on here are laying flat and that you don't have one kind of angled up. Um, that can cause uh, you know, not a good contact uh, and cause uh, power issues. Um, so that can, you know, uh, things like, you know, your engine harness and your engine uh, control module, ECM, uh, get wired in down here uh, as well as the starter. So if any of these are loose, um, that can cause you no start issues. Uh, also in here on one of these wiring harnesses, uh, there are th usually three fuses um, on one of the harnesses uh, to check for. Um, I have had problems with these blowing before. So there's a little plastic uh, protector on here that you can undo. And when you open that up, you see that there is a fuse in there. Uh, so check, make sure these fuses are, are sitting good and solid and they're not corroded uh, on the connectors and the fuse itself is not blown. Like I said, there are three of them in here. Um, the easiest way to get at them actually is to slide the whole battery tray out. Um, but because this battery box is so busy and so crowded, um, I'm not going to pull that out for the video because it's really a pain to get back in. Um, but uh, if, you're, if you're having a no start issue, you know, check these fuses, make sure that they are good. And then you just put this little plastic cover back on uh, to protect it when it's done. Okay, so now at the back of the bus, uh, one of the things you'll hear a lot is the uh, interconnects or interlocks uh, and making sure that these are off. 
Um, this uh, is a thing that can cause a no start. Uh, so if you've been doing any conversion work on the bus uh, and you've been taking out wiring or things like that, um, that's one of the most common things that uh, all of a sudden one day your bus just doesn't start. Uh, so what you're looking for is you can see there's this little hook on the back door and that correlates to, well, hard to see because we've, we've built this out, but you see this little peg that sticks out uh, right here. Um, there's a little control box that's uh, behind this uh, this board, um, but you need to make sure. The idea is that uh, when the bus is parked, um, this thing slides out kind of like a gate latch and into the eyelet um, that was on the door that I just showed you. So uh, if the door is locked, meaning this peg is out, um, that will cause the bus not to start. Uh, or if you've disconnected any of the wiring in here, um, that will also cause the bus not to start. So you need to make sure your wiring here is intact or has been removed correctly from the panel up front, uh, and then make sure that this thing is in the uh, door open position. Because like I said, if, that, if this uh, thing is in the door closed position, that will cause you a no start issue. Okay, up inside the bus, a couple things to look for if uh, you're having uh, no start issues. Um, <clears throat> One of the things I mentioned before was that noise kill switch, uh, which on this bus uh, has been removed, but it's usually one of the uh, panels right here or switches right here. Uh, it's usually orange or red in color. Uh, it's your noise kill. Um, so if he, some of your things in the bus are not working, like uh, heaters, fans, stuff like that. Um, again, it doesn't relate to a no start issue, but just general troubleshooting. Um, you know, make sure that, that switch is in the uh, correct position and, you know, the wiring is all good there. Uh, but back to no start issues, um, make sure your, your transmission is in neutral. Uh, most of these buses have uh, an Allison 2500 um, uh, transmission. Um, the only really way to know what your transmission is is to actually crawl under the bus and look at the plate on the transmission. Uh, but you can kind of tell by the gear shift selector. If you have an electronic touchpad display, that's usually a 3000 series. Um, the T knob here is usually a 20, 2000 series or a 2500, which is what this is. This is the most common. Uh, but if the bus is not in neutral uh, or the sensor behind it do, does not think the bus is in neutral, it won't start. So if, if you have a lot of play uh, in your um in your shifter um that could be a sign that's just not making contact and it, the bus doesn't think it's a neutral so it won't start so if you're having issues starting you know move the gear shifter up and down a few times make sure you're locked in neutral solid um and that'll help you uh start so then uh things to watch so on a normal start uh what'll happen is as soon as i turn the key here um we, we will hear a series of noises um it's pretty quiet in the shop today so maybe you'll pick it up on on the camera um but uh, the first noise you're going to hear is that loud click coming from the solenoid panel outside. Um, that's the accessory solenoid coming in. The next thing we'll hear is a very low buzzing noise uh, coming from the engine compartment, um, which will last about 5-10 seconds. Those are the fuel injectors buzzing. Um, so if you don't hear that, uh, that's something that uh, you know can kind of help uh, the mechanic uh, diagnose what's going on. And then you will hear a series of tick 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 noises, which are the ABS on the uh, wheels. Um, uh, the testing of the ABS. Um, so you'll hear them in series. They'll kind of fade loud to, to soft as it goes from the front wheels to the back wheels, which are a little harder here. Uh, a couple other things we will notice once I turn this key on is depending on the temperature, um, you will get a wait to start light, which is orange. And what that is, is it's the grid heater inside the engine running. Uh, in warmer weather, uh, that may not uh, happen. In colder weather, uh, it does. Um, it's the equivalent on this bus of a glow plug. Uh, th these buses do not have glow plugs. They just have that little grid heater. Um, and so while that, um, and it's cold enough today, it's, uh, about 50 degrees inside my shop. It's about 20 degrees outside. So I expect, uh, the grid heater will try to run for a little bit. Um, so when I turn the key on, uh, we will get the, uh, parking brake light that comes on. This bus does have air brakes. Uh, so while this is engaged, uh, that light will come on. We should get that orange wait to start and we will watch the battery meter. Um, so when that grid heater is running, it draws a lot of power. So your voltmeter uh, here on the dash uh, will be registering very low while that grid heater is running. As soon as the grid heater is done running, the wait to start light should go off and we should see the uh, voltmeter rise above 12. Um, so one other thing that I did not mention when I was out in the battery box is make sure you know your batteries are well charged. Um, that this gauge is kind of a signal, but it's not super accurate. You should use a multimeter on the batteries themselves to check their level. Um, you wanna be at at least 12.6 volts, uh, ideally 12.8 or 13 or higher um, for, for, for good starting condition. Um, so I, anyway, when I turn the key, uh, we'll, we'll see this sit really low until the grid heater's done, and then we'll see the voltmeter rise up. Once I wait to start light is over, I'll go ahead and crank her over. And like I said, then we'll, uh, um, 
uh, the engine should start. Okay, uh, I just had to stop the video. Uh, when I first turned the key on, uh, all the heaters were on, so all we heard was uh, defrosters pulling, so we are going to try that again. Okay, so the grid heater did not actually run uh, this time. Must uh, The bus must be uh, warm enough inside the shop. So um, uh, we did not get that orange light, but you can see my voltmeter is up above 12. Uh, and cold conditions, like I said, that battery meter would be sitting at about an 11 or so while that wait to start light was going. Um, so I'm gonna turn the key off and cycle it again. Uh, and you can kind of listen for those noises. Like I mentioned, you'll hear the loud click from the electrical panel, which is solenoid. You'll hear the injectors buzzing, and then you'll hear the ABS uh, you know, tick, tick noises. Uh, so that's what it should sound like when you're starting. Uh, I went ahead and turned it off uh, so uh, you can hear me and not just the engine. Uh, if you're still having issues, um, it's very helpful to be able to run diagnostic codes on these things. Um, and the way you do that is with uh, what's called a NexIQ adapter, uh, which I have one that looks like this. It's just a little blue box says NexIQ. Um, one, and then on the wire itself, you got a couple different ends. First, just a standard USB that plugs into your laptop or computer. And then you'll have a couple of different uh, round connectors here. Uh, these buses use the green one. Uh, so what you do is you just plug this into the bus and then you plug that into your computer and you will uh, download a free software called Navistar Service Max. Um, you get it from a Snap-on website. Uh, it's free to download uh, and install uh, for this generation of buses. There is a newer version called Navistar Engine Diagnostics, uh, which you have to have for the Max Force engines, uh, but these older, um, you know, 466Es um, from, you know, prior to 2008, uh, that software is free for those. This adapter is uh, pretty expensive. Um, it's about 700 bucks uh, to buy a legitimate one. Uh, there are Chinese knockoffs um, that some people uh, have reported good luck with. Uh, your mileage uh, may vary. This is actually a legitimate one I bought several years ago. Uh, paid a lot of money for it. Um, it. It was a hard pill to swallow at the time, but this thing has been a lifesaver more than once. Uh, so what we do with that is we plug it in. Uh, the plug for this is actually underneath the dash, uh, kind of back behind the radio here. Um, so I will uh, crawl uh, down there, pause video, crawl under there and kind of show you where that is and how to hook that up. And then you would connect it to your laptop and run the software um, and you can pull the uh, diagnostic codes and that can help you uh, troubleshoot uh, some different issues. Okay, so I'm down on the ground here uh, under the stairwell. Um, you can see the, the driver's area. Uh, there's that radio I was talking about. Uh, so where we're going is right up underneath here. There's a little round connector. Where is it? Get in frame here. Uh, there, there she is. Uh, it's right up underneath the dash here. Uh, it's almost centered with the center aisle. Um, and then this just uh, plugs in up here. Sorry, it's a little, a little hard to see. Um, the, the pin layout is kind of uh, goofy. Um, so there is only one way for this to go on. Um, you just kind of have to uh, spin it around a little bit until you find the correct, and then it just slides on. Uh, it doesn't lock or anything like that. It just slides all the way up. And then to disconnect it, you just pull it straight down. On some older buses, um, Sometimes that connector is over to the left underneath the, the, the dash underneath the steering wheel on the left side there somewhere. Um, commonly you see it over there on uh, flat nose buses, either uh, front engine um, buses or the rear engine pushers. Uh, you'll see the connector over there. If you do have a rear engine bus, um, I do have one of those uh, as well uh, sitting over there. There is a, another little panel in the engine compartment at the back of that that does have one of those connectors too that you can hook this up to. So hopefully uh, this is uh, helpful for, for starting one of these buses and, uh, and uh, good luck to you. Thanks.